you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, I'm going to be reading 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped in every good work. Now, before I, I get to the message today, I want to address something that's kind of a contemporary issue. It's been around for a while, but I want to address it here. Where the Bible says, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped, it goes for women of God, too. Amen. I do not believe in gender fluidity. That means that you just pretty much choose whatever gender you want to be or any kind of mixture of gender. I don't believe in that at all. God created them male and female, and someday you will stand before God as he created you, male or female. I don't believe in gender fluidity. God chose that for you. But I do believe in gender equality, and God chose that also. And When I was in college, we used to call this a unisex statement. When the Bible says man of God, it really means mankind, which includes men and women. But evidently for some people, that's not good enough these days. So I want you to understand this is for everybody. Now, there are also defined roles, some defined roles in Scripture for men and women. And I'm not afraid to preach about that when it's a Scripture that deals with that in context. That's not what we're talking about today. This Scripture is for both. This is for men of God and women of God. If you are a child of God. You must listen to God. <laughs> you got to listen to him. He's your father, a good, good father. But he's dad. Amen. And you have to listen to him. If you're not reading your Bible, you are not listening to God. You may be hearing voices in your head. But if that voice is God, then whatever else he's speaking to you, he will say, read my word. Amen. Read the Bible. Now, I know that not every generation in history has had Bibles. And I know that there are countries where Bibles are really illegal, and there are places in this world where they have limited access to the Scriptures. I know that. But I'm not preaching to them today. I'm preaching to you. And if you are not reading your Bible, you are not listening to God. In fact, if all you're doing is just reading the Bible, you're not really listening to God. You have to also do it. You have to read and obey. And to obey, you have to understand. And to understand, you have to study. So no wonder so many Christians don't understand God or obey God. It's because it takes effort. It takes work. But it's enjoyable work. And it's very worthwhile work. And you can do it. You can read and understand and operate what God tells you to do in the Word of God. You can do it, and you'll be so glad you did. When you see the fruit of allowing His Word to come alive in you, you'll see the fruit of it and be glad you did here. And someday, if you get in the Word of God and obey the Word of God, you'll be glad when you stand before Him. Amen. And so the title of this morning's message is How to Get a Grip on the Bible. How to Get a Grip on God's Word. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your word today. Your word tells us who you are. This is where we learn about you, where we know about you, who you are, and what you want. Yeah. And I thank you, Lord God, for letting your word come alive today. Flow through me, Holy Spirit, and let me be clear today. Oh, God, let me be clear. And let us hear and respond to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We are all creatures of habits. Some habits are bad. Some habits are really good, like brushing your teeth. I hope that you are in the habit of brushing your teeth. If you are not, maybe we'll just maintain that six-foot rule. <laughs> good habits. In these next couple of weeks, I'm talking about good habits, the habits of discipleship, the habits that true disciples, serious students and followers of Jesus Christ, are going to practice. And the best habit that you can develop is spending time with God. And the best thing that you can do during that time that you're spending with God is to listen. Listen to Him. And the very best way to listen to God is to read the Bible. It's not the only way, but it's the best way. Read the Bible. God speaks primarily through His Word. And so all disciples must do this, develop the habit of Bible study. 
James chapter 1 and verse number 25, and I love this from the Jerusalem Bible. It says, the man who looks steadily at God's perfect law of freedom, talking about the word, and makes that his habit, <clears throat> not listening and then forgetting, but actively putting it into practice, listen, will be happy in all that he does. Does that sound good to anybody? We'll be happy, blessed in all that he does. So God is saying in his word, and he's saying that studying my word is the happiest habit in the world. Amen. Anybody want to be happy? Amen. Study God's word. God wants you to be happy. It doesn't mean everything in life is going to make you happy. I'm not saying that, but for lasting happiness, for lasting joy, study the word of God, get to know God. God wants you to be happy. In his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. God wants you to be happy. Satan doesn't. So many people think that, they, that Christians don't know how to have fun and aren't happy. They're all sour pusses and then the world, well, that's where you learn how to party. And they know what happiness is, but they don't. They're seeking happiness. They're trying to find it. They can find fun, but not lasting happiness. And that's what Satan wants you to do. Constantly being this pursuit of something that's unattainable, which is real joy and happiness without God. God wants you to be happy. Satan doesn't. The happiest habit in the world is studying God's Word, getting into God's Word. So, if you didn't read your Bible last week, who kept you out of the Word of God? It wasn't God. It's the devil. Now, know that you thought that when you finished school, you were finished with studying. But that is not true. You're only finished with studying when you're finished being tested. And you are not finished being tested. You are being tested, and so study. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So study to be a God-approved, unashamed speaker of the truth. You need to read God's word, and you need to read God's word every single day. God's word, the Bible, is spirit food. And what you feed grows, and what you starve dies. And God does not want you to die spiritually. Satan does. And the Word of God is spiritual food, it's spiritual life. And so God wants you to read the Bible. And Satan does not want you to read the Bible. So who was it that kept you out of God's Word this last week? Now, I know one of the most difficult things about reading the Bible, other than the fact that Satan does not want you to read the Bible, is that some people have a hard time understanding it. I've talked to many people who said, Jeff, I, I try to read the Bible and I just don't understand it. So that's why this message is titled, How to Get a Grip on God's Word. And I'm going to show you six ways to get a grip on God's Word. And I'm going to do it using an illustration that I hope that will help you to remember. The first contact that most people have with the Bible is hearing it. From a family member or from a friend, a preacher, a teacher. And you should never stop finding ways to hear God's word. You must hear God's word. <clears throat> because that's where faith comes from. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 says, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you are here in this church today, I hope that you are, if you're watching on video, I hope that you're hearing this message because you want God's word. Mm -hmm. That's why God wants you here. The most important thing that we do at church is proclaim God's word. It's in our songs. It's in our prayers. It's in the sermon. And hopefully it's in our actions. And you need this. You need church Amen. where you are saturated by God's word and surrounded by God's family. You need church. <clears throat> now, of course, God's with you when you're alone, too. But God strengthens you much more when you're with us, when you're in church, because God always works through teams. So every way you can, find a way to hear the Word of God. Be in church, listen to Christian music, watch Christian messages, talk to people about the Lord. You need to hear God's Word. Never stop hearing God's Word. But if that's as far as you ever go with God's Word, if all you ever do is just hear other people talk about God... You are never going to get a firm grip on the Word of God. And so I have a couple of illustrations to help you, I hope, to, to uh, get a good grip on God's Word. And I'm going to use this illustration. Of the outline of a hand. And for 
your convenience, I've already put this on the back of your bulletin. Now, my idea was for all of you to trace your hand on the back of the bulletin this morning. And so I thought, well, I'll practice. I'll do it myself and see if I can do it. I couldn't do it. I put my hand on the back of it, but I didn't put any other notes on the back of your bulletin. So I, I tried to trace my hand on the back of the bulletin, and it was really, really hard. And so I thought, how are they going to do it? It's going to be time consuming. And some people have, and I could barely fit my hand on the back of the bulletin. How about Big John? Big John's hand's not going to fit on the back of that. So I just traced my hand as carefully as I could, edited it just a little bit. And now on the back of your bulletin, you have a hand. And what I'd like you to do on that hand to help demonstrate getting a grip on God's word is on the pinky finger, write the word here. On the pinky finger. Write the word here. The first contact you have with God's word is by hearing it. And that's good. You must hear the word of God. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. But if that's all you ever get, you're not going to have a good grip on the Bible. And Sadie's going to help me demonstrate this. Sadie, if you'll come on up. This is like having a pinky finger grip on the Bible. Now, here's my, my Bible. And if all you ever do is hear it, and all you ever get is a pinky finger grip on the Bible, this is what a good grip you have. Sadie, if you just hold this with your pinky fingers. You got it? Now, how hard is it going to be for circumstances in this world for the devil to come along? <laughs> you get that? It's a, you go this way. <laughs> Remember when we practiced. <laughs> so many people hear the word of God, and that's great. Faith. You tell somebody the word of God, they have the faith to receive it and get saved. Amen. But if that's as far as you ever go, you're not going to have a good grip on God's word. You need to do more than just hear it. You need to read it. You must read God's word. Yes. Amen. In John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. Then Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We are the most blessed generation in the history of the world because I want you to see my Bible. And uh, I was supposed to have it up here with me, and I don't, but just pretend that this is my cell phone. Here is my Bible. <laughs> If you have a cell phone and you can get on the internet, you've got the Bible. You know, Bible thumpers used to carry these big Bibles around with them everywhere they went. And now very few of us actually do that. But if you've got your phone on you, you've got the Bible on you. You know what your cell phone is if you can get on the internet? You know what your cell phone is? It is access. I used to preach very correctly that there are teenagers walking around the halls of our high schools who have never held a Bible in their hands. They've never owned a Bible. A great number of the teenagers in our schools have never even touched a Bible. But I can't say that anymore. Because what do they all have their hands on? Cell phones and the internet. You know what that is? That's God giving access. Look what the Lord has done. He's provided. We are such a blessed generation. It's never been so easy to read God's word, to find truth, to find freedom, to find salvation, to find direction. All you have to do is want it. Yeah. And if you want it, God has provided. Amen. And you need it. Read the Bible every day. It couldn't be easier, but it also couldn't be more important. You don't need just to hear the word of God. You need to read the Word of God. And so on the next finger, what's that, the ring finger? Is that what I said? On the ring finger, write the word read. Read the Word of God. And then you don't just have a pinky finger grip on the Bible anymore, which Sadie was really struggling with. Amen. Now you're going to have a much better grip. Watch this. <laughs> a four-finger grip on the Bible and that's a much better grip. Amen. You get it, you're getting a grip. But it's not enough. If all you ever do is hear it and read it, how hard is it going to be for something to come along and snatch the Word of God away from you? You need to do more than just hear and read. You need to study God's Word. You must study God's Word. 
2 Timothy 2.15, again, says, Study to show yourself approved, a workman who doesn't need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The, the word of truth. You know the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Study God's word. But I think that word study intimidates some people. That was school. That was a long time ago. But studying is so easy. Here are just a couple of tips, two very easy things. Is when you read the Bible, don't just read it, but ask questions. As you read it, how, how, do, how does this apply to me? What is really going on here in the scripture? Ask questions. Now, I know that very few people who aren't in full-time ministry, you have busy lives, very few people are going to really deeply study God's word every single day. Read God's word every single day. But you also need to study. And so here's what I ask you to do. At least, I'll just say, a few times a week, where that means a couple of days or four or five days a week, set aside time to actually study God's Word. Read the Bible. Read it every morning. But if you're not a morning person, that's probably not the best time for you to study. I know so many people say, I'm going to get serious with God. I'm going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and read my Bible and study God's Word for a couple of hours before I have to get ready for work. And what that turns into eventually is just another nap. <laughs> if you're not a morning person, especially if you're not an early morning person, that's not the best time to study. Study when you're at your best, but at least a couple of times a week. Read a scripture and then talk about it with yourself and with God. Ask questions. How do I fit into this? What is this saying to me? And another great way to study the Word is to have a study partner. Somebody that you study with, that you read a scripture, and then talk about that scripture with somebody else. It can be a family member or a friend, but talk it out. Discuss the scriptures. But here, I think, is the best way to understand the difference between just reading the Bible and studying the Bible. The best way to understand the difference between reading and studying is a pencil. Take notes. Write things down. Even if you're reading it on your phone, you can take notes on your phone. You can, you can have a notebook available, underline, highlight, write stuff down. Don't just read the Bible, but study it. And when you start studying the Bible, you are halfway to a really good grip on God's Word. And so on the middle finger, write the word, study. Hear it on the pinky finger, read it on the ring finger, study the Word of God. And now you're going to have so much better grip. Watch this. <laughs> All right, Savy. A six-finger grip, halfway to a great grip on the Word of God. Can you see the difference, folks, between hearing, reading, and studying as opposed to just hearing the Bible? Go to church once in a while and hear somebody talk about it. Look, it's no problem for her to hold the Word of God. But it's not a great grip. It's a better grip, but it's not a great grip. Are you ready? Everybody getting it? She's getting a grip. But she's not there yet. So you can't stop with just studying the Word of God. You must meditate on God's Word. Yes. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And he's like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, everybody get this? Whatever he does prospers. Amen. Anybody want to prosper? Amen. Get a grip on God's Word by meditating on the Word of God. Learn to meditate on God's Word. Hear it. Every chance you get, hear the Word. Read it. Read it every day. Take notes. Study. And then dwell on what you're reading. Dwell on it through the day. Meditation is just focused thinking. That's what meditation is. Now, when I was growing up, I don't remember anybody talking to us about meditation, meditating on the Word of God. It's just not a word that we use very much. When I thought of meditation, I thought of these Eastern religions, these New Age kind of things, where they're sitting around, you know, in robes going, oh, you know. That kind of. Meditation is just focused thinking, and you can do it. Don't just read the Bible, but think about what you read. I do it every day. I always read the Bible first because faith comes by hearing. I read the Bible, then I pray. Faith comes by hearing. So I read the Bible, and then during my prayer time, I meditate on what God spoke to me. I always put on the full armor of God, and part of the full armor of God is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so as I get to that point in my prayer life, I say, now here's what I got from your scripture today, God. Here's what I believe you spoke to my heart. Meditate on God's Word, and you can do it. You can meditate. If you think you can't meditate, I'm about to prove you wrong. Here's a great example of meditation. Worry. How many of you are good at that? You don't have to raise your hand. 
If you can worry, you are well practiced in meditation. Worry is negative meditation. Amen. Just turn it around. The Bible says think about good things, positive things, encouraging things. Meditate on the Word of God. And when you start meditating, you are getting a great grip on God's Word. So on the pointing finger, write the word meditate. And now, a four-finger grip. Look at the difference this is going to make. She's not struggling. It's going to take, I hope you're getting this, I'm like the devil. <laughs> it's going to take more effort. I'm like hard times that you go through that can try to separate you from God's word. You see how it's much more difficult now to take this away? <laughs> I can just barely do it with one hand. That hurts <laughs> <laughs> Rest over there, say. Amen. Meditate on God's word. You're almost there, but not quite. There's another thing that you have to do, and that is memorize. You must memorize God's word. Psalm 119 and verse number 11. It doesn't mean you have to memorize the whole Bible, but Psalm 119 and verse number 11 says, I've hidden your, your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, I've already, already talked about your cell phones. And almost all of us carry our cell phones everywhere you go. So maybe you think, why do I need to memorize Scripture when I can just pull out my phone? Uh, Michelle, both of our kids are, are still in school. They're both in graduate school, but they're still in school, and both of them are pursuing kind of like business degrees. And so even in grad school, they have to take math. They are so tired of math. Both of them are good at math, not as good as their mom, but both of them are good at math, but they're so tired of it. And here's what they hate. They hate to have to take an exam, which is going to have math in it, and not to be able to use a calculator. I've got a calculator right here. It's on my phone. I've got, why can't I? The professor said, you can't use a calculator. And here's the, here's the reason. Here's the reason you need to memorize God's word. If you can, yes, you have your phone. Your phone is on you, but your heart is in you. Amen. And you don't just need the word of God on you. You need the word of God in you. And you can memorize. So many people say, Jeff, I can't memorize. But you can, and I can prove it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the flag. You can memorize. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. You can memorize. Amen. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of a <laughs> that started from this tropic port. <laughs> How do you know Gilligan's Island? How do you know Amazing Grace? How do, you, how do you know the Pledge of Allegiance? Because you repeated it. Repetition. If you want to memorize Scripture, you can memorize Scripture. All you have to do is keep saying it. Repeat it over and over again. Hide God's Word deeply in your heart. So that you won't sin against him. So that you can become more like Jesus. Just memorize one scripture at a time. I say one scripture a month. If you will start now. Memorizing scripture is not just for kids in children's church. If you'll start right now memorizing a scripture. One a month. This time next year. You'll know 12 more scriptures than you know right now. Quoting them. Scripture and verse. Get into God's word. Quote God's word. It gives you so much more strength. Yeah. So ready to combat the devil just like Jesus did. How did Jesus combat the devil? The devil said, well, the Bible says this. But Jesus said, no, the Bible says this. Yeah. Quote God's word. And then on your thumb, write the word memorize. And now you've got a five-finger grip on the word of God. And this is going to be tough. Come on, Sadie. You can just, no, 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 just your fingers. <laughs> just your fingers. Finger grip, finger grip. I'm not going to be able to take this away with one hand. Now, let me show you something. There's somebody over here, because the devil doesn't know like anybody. He doesn't care about saving any more than anybody else. And somebody over here has got a one or two finger grip on the Bible. And Satan's got to take on one of these adversaries, because he's not, they're not an infinite number of demons. They can only go after so many people. And you got this kind of grip on the Word of God? You know that creditors always look for the weak? Does this look weak compared to when she had those two fingers on it? 
So now I'm not going to be able to take this away with one hand. It's going to take two. <laughs> Satan sees you like that. He knows he's in for a fight. Maybe he'll be able to win, but he knows he's in for a fight. And so you can't stop there. There's one more thing. The most important thing. You have to do all the others to get here. But the most important thing is you must apply God's word. Amen. James chapter 1 verse number 22 says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And then Jesus said in Matthew 5, 19, Whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is when Jesus says to you, great job. <laughs> He's not going to say great job just because you can quote scriptures. The devil can quote the Bible all day long. Yes. But when you live it, when you apply the word of God, these are the ones that he calls great in the kingdom of heaven. Hear it, read it, study it, meditate on it, memorize it, but most importantly, do it. There are people who, like the devil, can quote scriptures, have memorized scriptures, that study the scriptures. They study them so that they can disprove them. There are a lot of people who know the Bible but choose not to believe. So they can do all five of these things and still not be a Christian. If you really want to be like Jesus, if you really want to be a true disciple, you have to put it into practice. You do not have a good grip on God's Word unless you are living it. You have a good grip on God's Word when you live it. And so on the palm of the hand, write the word, apply. Do it. Do God's word. And folks, this is how you get the grip. By not just knowing it, hearing it, reading it, meditating, memorizing it, but by doing it. Knowledge puffs up. Love builds up. And if you really love God, you'll get a grip on God's word. <laughs> now, y'all ready for this? <clears throat> Let me stretch a little bit. <laughs> now let me tell you who's going to win. Jesus. The person who's going to win here, shh, you, you just gave my question. The person who's going to, the person who's going to win here, is whoever's the strongest. And if you've got a grip on God's word, then you know that greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Amen. Satan has no chance. Amen. We're not really going to fight over it. Thank you, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all give her a hand. Hey, 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 hey. Wish I had a little sling in the <laughs> Read your Bible every single day. I recommend that you read it in the morning because don't you get dressed in the morning? You're putting on the full armor of God, which is putting on Jesus Christ, the Word of God, from head to toe. Read the Bible every single morning. Pray, uh, read the Bible, and then pray. Study the Bible when you're at your best. If you're at your best at, at night, before you go to bed, if that's when you're sharpest, take a few minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour. Take 10 minutes to read a small portion of Scripture and meditate on it and, and study it and take notes and find out what it means. Study the Word of God. But most importantly, as you get to know the Word of God, put it into practice. Almost every day when I read the Scriptures, if I'm paying attention, I'm reading the book of Proverbs right now. And Solomon keeps saying to his sons, my son, pay attention to me. Almost every chapter. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Don't let these words fall on deaf ears. Pay attention. If you pay attention when you read the Bible, God will tell you what to do. Read God's word and do it, and you will grow. Amen. You will be a true disciple, Amen. a serious student and follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for your word, yeah. and thank you for the power of your word. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll help us to do all of these things, to be people of the word, people of the book, to be like Jesus, who is the living word of God. And we thank you and give you praise for it. In your matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.